war on terror is not confined strictly to the Al Qaeda that we're chasing. The war on terror involves Saddam Hussein. Ever since the end of the Gulf War, a small group of influential policymakers has wanted to rid the Middle East of Saddam Hussein. But going to war to achieve it was not politically feasible until after September 11, 2001. Well, I believe there was a strong argument for looking at Iraq before September 11. What September 11 taught us is that we can wait too long in the presence of a known and a visible threat. On the afternoon of September 11th, Richard Pearl phoned one of President Bush's speechwriters, David Frum. I had a conversation with David. And what was the content of that? That we, we are not going to deal effectively with global terrorism if states can uh, support and sponsor and harbor terrorists without penalty. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. At 8.30 that evening, President Bush spoke to the nation. He laid out his policy, echoing the words that Pearl had suggested to his speechwriter earlier in the day. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. Four days later, the president and his cabinet gathered at Camp David to formulate strategy in the war on terrorism. President Bush told cabinet members that if Saddam Hussein was to become a target, they needed to dig up evidence that he was cooperating with Al-Qaeda. Within days, Deputy Secretary of Defense Paul Wolfowitz directed one of his deputies, Douglas Fyth, to set up a special office inside the Pentagon that would examine intelligence regarding Iraq's possible connection with Al-Qaeda. It started as a small, secretive operation. It was very simple. It was clear that no one had been looking for, for links uh, of a kind that it was reasonable uh, to uh, consider might exist. We didn't know whether they existed. And the evidence might have been that they didn't exist. Uh, so some people uh, uh, were brought in to take a look. And within a very short period of time, they began to find links that nobody else had previously understood. When it came to Iraq, the Special Intelligence Office didn't trust what the CIA or even their own Defense Intelligence Agency had to say. They did apparently listen to Ahmed Chalabi. According to one Pentagon source, he visited once every other month. Across the Potomac, Greg Thielman had analyzed intelligence for the State Department for seven years. That office was largely invisible to us in the intelligence community because they didn't, they didn't uh, play in the, in the normal bureaucratic uh, process of, of making intelligence assessments and reporting on those what assessments. What did you understand that office to be about? I'm still trying to figure out what that office was about. The office wasn't big enough for them to really have the expertise in-house, and the mere creation of the office was, was odd since the Secretary of Defense had the entire Defense Intelligence Agency at his disposal. So it, it's a, a little mysterious what exactly they were doing. Let me be blunt about this. The level of competence of the Central Intelligence Agency in this area is appalling. They had filtered out uh, the whole set of possibilities because it was inconsistent with their model. So uh, if you're walking down the street and you're, uh, you're not looking for uh, hidden treasure, you won't find it. Conversely, if you look for something, you will find it simply because you are, are looking and the nature of intelligence is, is very often vague and things can be interpreted one way or another. Of course, no, there's no absolute truth in this. It is not publicly known what intelligence was provided by the Special Intelligence Office. But Frontline has learned that a report from the Czech Republic that 9-11 hijacker Mohammed Atta met with an Iraqi intelligence officer in Prague got their attention and was passed on to the White House. That report that uh, has been pretty well confirmed 
that he did go to Prague and he did meet with um, a senior official of the Iraqi intelligence service in Czechoslovakia last April, several months before the attack. Now, uh, but the meeting in Prague was, was never confirmed. Uh, what in fact, the FBI established one month later through car rental records that Atta was in Florida when the alleged Prague meeting would have occurred. The vice president, however, would still be citing the story over a year later. On at least one occasion, we have reporting that places him in Prague with uh, a senior Iraqi intelligence official a few months before the attack on the World Trade Center. Uh, I think it's very unusual the amount of influence they had. What seems to have happened is that the, the conclusions or the work that they did somehow entered from the side into the policy community at a very high a, level at a very high level in a way that was invisible to those of us in the intelligence community producing intelligence